Hello guys and welcome back to our channel. Today I want to talk about hyperventilation. Yes, again about hyperventilation and freediving. I did the video about the danger of the hyperventilation before. The link is going to be in the description and somewhere on top. But today I decided to do one more video. And the reason why I decided to do one more video about hyperventilation it is because there is a, some misunderstanding uh, about the hyperventilation. And this misunderstanding coming from the reason that almost any free divers, when they do their official free diving courses, was told that hyperventilation is really dangerous. Again, if you don't know why, check the link in the description. But then, if you watch free diving competition, especially static free diving competition, you can see that high level static free divers, and by high levels, I mean people who do, let's say, eight or maybe even nine minute plus most of the time they do some variation of hyperventilation so and now there is a confusion your free diving instructor told you that hyperventilation is dangerous but now you watch elite free divers and you see that they do hyperventilation before their static maximum attempt so who is right who is wrong before we continue my name is sergey i'm a free diving instructor trainer and on this channel i helping you to become a better free diver so if you're first time here, subscribe to this channel, click the like button, click the bell button. In this case, you're not going to miss my videos and welcome to our channel. Okay, hyperventilation. So first of all, guys, I want to understand you a few things. First of all, hyperventilation can be different. So, for example, if you slightly increase the depth of your breathing, it's going to be probably small hyperventilation. If you're going to increase the depth of your breathing but also how often you breathe then it's going to be bigger hyperventilation or if you start breathing like crazy like really deep and really often then it's probably going to be the biggest hyperventilation and depends how big hyperventilation it's going to be obviously different how dangerous hyperventilation if you do a small hyperventilation it's less dangerous it's still dangerous but less dangerous but then if you do like massive hyperventilation, it can be more dangerous. Another thing what I want you to understand, it is that if you do hyperventilation, it's not guaranteed that you're gonna have a blackout. Absolutely not. So this is why maybe you know someone who, who train with a hyperventilation and haven't have like any LMC or blackout. And then you can think, oh, then hyperventilation is not dangerous. No. The hyperventilation increasing the chance of becoming hypoxic, right? So if you do hyperventilation, then there is a more chance that at the end of your static attempt, you're going to be more hypoxic than without hyperventilation. And if you're becoming more hypoxic, then of course the chances to have an LMC on blackout is much higher. However, hyperventilation not guarantee lead to the, let's say, blackout. Right, so you're just becoming more hypoxic and maybe you're gonna reach your hypoxic uh, threshold and then you can have a blackout. This is why sometimes if you ask a free diver who practice breath hold with a hyperventilation for a while, uh, does he or she have uh, any blackouts or LMC in the past? Usually they do have it. Usually they have a history of LMC and blackout. So the majority of the free divers who do like a massive hyperventilation have a history of LMC and blackouts. Okay, if you understand that, let's then move to my main idea. So let's imagine some elite free diver who do his static, let's say for nine minutes, right? So th th this person training static free diving for maybe five years or maybe longer and now they do nine minutes breath hold. And if you watch them when they're preparing for the maximum attempt, you see they do hyperventilation. So let's think about this person a little bit more. So more likely this person, after countless of training session, is a master of relaxation. Probably this person can become as relaxed as human can be. I'm talking both about like physical relaxation and also like mental relaxation as well also this person have a really really good adaptation again through many many years of training this person have a uh, high co2 tolerance low o2 tolerance etc 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 so this person 
who training five, six, seven years is completely different animal. So they ch there is a lot of change which happens with a free diver over like many years of training, right? And then the hyperventilation is like a cherry on the top of this training cake, right? So the person master his relaxation, master his body position, master his mental toughness, master his CO2 tolerance, O2 tolerance, and then add hyperventilation. And in this case, it's probably helped to reach slightly higher numbers or maybe significantly higher numbers. And there is no problem with this. So if uh, you see such elite uh, static athlete, then hyperventilation probably can be justified if you want to have like really big number. However, if you're thinking about average freediver who may be training for a few months or maybe even a year, and then you see that this person trying to reach, let's say, a four minute breath hold and trying to uh, use the hyperventilation as a tool to achieve this breath hold, this four minutes breath hold. What you can say about this person? You can say that this person, ignoring the basics of free diving, ignoring improving relaxation, ignoring improving body position, mental toughness, etc., etc., and just slightly cutting the corner and allow himself or herself to become more hypoxic by doing hyperventilation and then achieve this number. So this kind of training is not sustainable. So it can help you to achieve slightly smaller number, but then again, it coming with, a, with a two things. First of all, uh, the chance of blackout or LMC becoming higher. And second, your whole training is probably gonna be compromised because if such person is gonna start to focusing on the hyperventilation part, probably the next step is gonna be, oh, if I want to hold my breath longer, let's do hyperventilation a little bit more intense. And then maybe a little bit more intense. And do you know what happened next? The next is gonna be blackout. So guys, if you holding your breath, let's say less than six minutes, I recommend to completely forget about hyperventilation. So maybe in the future, when you're gonna hold your breath for seven minutes or maybe six minutes, then maybe on the top, you're gonna start doing a little hyperventilation in the beginning, maybe. It's gonna be your choice. But right now, if your breath holds three, four, five minutes, just forget about hyperventilation. It's not what you need at this point of your training cycle. Okay, guys, this is my video about hyperventilation again. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to click the like button and I will see you next time.